Committee included. Good morning. Good morning to the Texas Association of Tonsil Artists at the 57th Convention in Corsicana, Texas. Good morning, Mr. Charles Williams. Good morning to charter members, the past presidents, to the officers and to the friends of, of the TAOTA. I'm your president, James Edward Smith, better known as Smitty Smith. I just come to you to come to you this morning to let you know that I wanted to be included today, uh, but for uncircumcised reason, I cannot be there today. Uh, I've taken on a new responsibility with my job for my family, and uh, I just really wanted to be there with you all today, but I can't. And so the only way I could be there with you physically is through this videotape. But spiritually, I'm with you there every day. The TAOTA is a part of me and a part of my family and my life. And I just want you to know that I am your president. I want to be, continue to be your president. And I want you all to... Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, our Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ, for Lord, we come. As most almost we know how, Lord, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts, O Heavenly Father, and praises lifted up to thee, O Heavenly Father. For praises is the only thing you require of us, O Lord. And we thank you, O Lord. We praise you, Lord. We magnify your holy and righteous name. For you deserve all the praise, O Lord. You deserve all the honor, O Lord. For we know, Heavenly Father, we couldn't, we couldn't have done anything without thee, O Lord. And we thank you, O Heavenly Father, for you, what you're about to do for the Texas Association of Tulsa Artists, O Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. We embrace you, Lord, as we embrace change, O Heavenly Father, in this 21st century, O Heavenly Father. We, break, we, we, we magnify your holy and righteous name, O Heavenly Father, so we can be able to face tomorrow challenges with this TAOTA. For 57 years, oh Lord, you shine, you shine your love upon this organization. And Lord, we just want you, Lord, to continue, Heavenly Father. As we go forth with Heavenly Father, from this day, April the 25th, be with us through the 27th, oh Heavenly Father. Be with us in every program that we put on, Heavenly Father. We thank you, O Lord. We praise you, O Lord. We just glorify you, O Heavenly Father. For you've been better than us. We've been to ourselves, O Lord. For you woke us up this morning. And you started us on our mighty and mighty way, O Heavenly Father. And for this, O Lord, we will ever be grateful, Heavenly Father. We just want, to know, want you to know, Heavenly Father, that we are going to do what you will have us to do. For we realize, O Lord, that we are one. We are only one. We cannot do everything, but we can do something. And what we can do, we ought to do. And by the grace of God, we will do it. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for this a year, oh Heavenly Father. We have our own African-American president, President Barack Obama, oh Heavenly Father. We ask a special blessing upon him and his family, oh Heavenly Father. We ask a special blessing of him and his staff, oh Lord. His cabinet, oh Heavenly Father. And they lead this country, oh Heavenly Father. We thank you, oh Heavenly Father, for you put him in that position, oh Heavenly Father. Now, Lord, guide him, oh Heavenly Father. Direct him, oh Heavenly Father, that he would do be the president for the people, of the people, by the people, oh Heavenly Father. And Lord, Yes, thank you, Heavenly Father, what you have already done on Sunday, oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the priest word, oh, Heavenly Father, that came forth for Heavenly Father. We thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, in advance, oh, Lord, what's going to happen tonight in the hospitality and the queen contest, oh, Lord. Lord, we thank you for what's going to happen Tuesday morning, Heavenly Father, the General Assembly, the election of the new officers of this, of this organization, Heavenly Father. Lord, when we come
the minister hit the father at the banquet or hit the father. We give awards to a recognized men and women of this organization. We thank you in advance, O Heavenly Father. We praise you, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord. We cherish you, O Lord. We love you, O Lord, for you are worthy, O Heavenly Father. And then, Lord, give us traveling grace, O Heavenly Father. We go back to our various destinations, O Heavenly Father. When we go back to our chapters, our chapters, then let there be a burden, O Heavenly Father, that someone will reach out and touch one. Tell them about the Texas Association of Tonsor Arts. Let them know, Heavenly Father, that there's an organization for barbers throughout the state, O Heavenly Father. Realize, O Heavenly Father, that we are not in control. You are in control. Just go with us and stand by us. And when we've done our best down here, and we can't do it anymore, we ask you for a place somewhere in your kingdom. We praise your name forever. It's in the name of Jesus I pray. Thank you. There's a story that goes The H.M. Morgan went before the United Nations in New York and, he, and his plane was late when he landed. And so he had to land in New Jersey. And he got into the limousine and the limousine was driving. He said, I need to get to the United Nations real quickly because I'm going to be speaking in the next 30 minutes. And the driver was driving so slow and Morgan was getting so impatient that, that he tapped on the window. He said, can you drive this limousine any faster? The young man continued driving the limousine as slow as possible and Morgan tapped on the window again. He said, look, said I'm in a hurry. said I'm getting ready to speak before the United Nations. I'm getting ready to share the good news of the Texas Association of Tunstall's Artists that were born in 1952 in Tyler, Texas. Said I, said, I got to get there. Said, can you drive this limousine a little faster? And the man was still driving. And Morgan knocked on it again and said, look, pull over. The man pulled over. Morgan got behind the steering wheel and put him in the put him in the back seat of the limousine. Morgan didn't really know where he was going, but he was driving to the United Nations. Morgan started driving, going around curves and running stop signs and red lights. And, and he was just going as fast as he could. He could see the building, but he was going as fast as he could. And, and there was two police officers in the automobile. And they turned their lights on and they got in behind Morgan in the limousine. And the police officer pulled Morgan over, and he pulled over to the side and put the car in gear, rolled the window down, and waited for the officer to come to him. The officer came to him and said, he looked in there, and he went back to his car, and he didn't write Morgan a ticket. His friend looked at him. He said, man, I said, so why you didn't write that man a ticket? He said, you don't know who's in there. He said, well, look, is he the Pope? He said, no. He said, well, is he the president of the United States? He said, no. He said, is he Martin Luther King? He said, no. He said, well, who is this man? He said, I don't know who's in the back. But there's a man named Henry Miller Morgan from Tyler, Texas, who just organized the Texas Association of Tarsos Artists. So he's doing the drive and said, I couldn't give him a ticket. Good morning, T-A-O-T-A. -A. I just wanted to break that in for you this morning. I just want you to know that, hey, we are somebody because of Henry M. Morgan, who's to the right of me. We stand on the shoulder of Henry Morgan and a chartered member of this organization. We stand on the shoulder of the past presidents of this organization. We stand on the shoulders of each chapter and each chapter presidents of this organization. We stand on the shoulder of each officer of this organization, past and present. 
we stand on the shoulders of the men and the women who come to the convention year after year. And we are here today in Carson County, Texas. Who would have believed it? I know you'd believe it because there is nothing impossible for God. We have come a long way and we still have a long way to go. 57 years. I'm 55 years old. But this organization was born 57 years ago. And I say to this organization, keep on keeping on. For you all have done a great work and you continue to do a great work. Go on with your bad self. The T-A-O-T-A. -A. I just thank God for you. I thank God that I am your president. I thank God that I will want, I want to continue to be your president. As we look at change in 2010, I've been working 26 years in the IBM Corporation, 11 years for IBM. The last 17 years, I worked for Grubin Ellis Real Estate Management, doing the same job that I was doing when I was working for IBM. For in 1982, IBM decided they were going to downsize, and what a change that was. But you know, it really wasn't a bad change, it was a good change. And I done, I done my, my work for IBM. And last year, IBM decided they were going to bid out the contract. 17 years, we have done the same job and, and, and performed and made all requirements that IBM would require us to do. And they decided that they were going to go in a new direction, that they were going to build out, bid out the contract. And so I didn't understand it, but God did. And for a year, they couldn't get everything together. They, they, they tried to put the pieces of the puzzle together. It was kind of like Humpty Dumpty who sat on the wall and Humpty Dumpty had a great fall and all the king men and all the king horses couldn't put old Humpty Dumpty back together again. But let me tell you, for the last year, it's been a little stressful on your president. But God has been right there by my side. And I thank him for that. The contract was supposed to be over this past July, 2009. They're supposed to award it in the third week of July. That date came and passed. Then the contract was supposed to be awarded by December by the third week in December of 2009. That day came and passed. I'm talking about change, change, change. The type of change I'm talking about is that you'll be able to embrace it, then you can face tomorrow challenges. But we're talking about change. It was just change. I wasn't, I wasn't able to embrace it, that change then. I, my, I, I, I felt things was, was falling away from me. I, God had blessed me and my wife and, and my daughter uh, have blessed my family. My mother is 97 years old. I, my brothers and my sisters, I, he blessed us. My nieces and my nephews, cousins, uncles and aunties, he, he blessed me for 55 years. He blessed me. And I, and I felt that things were just going away from me. But, you know, In 2010, in February, the contract was supposed to be awarded. And we had done all that we could do. They even came back and said, you know, said your price is a little high. So Grover and Ellis, they brought down the price for IBM, thinking that if they would bring it down three or four million dollars, they would be awarded a contract. But it didn't happen. We go into March. 
IBM award the court contract. They award this contract to a company called Floor, a Fortune 500 contract, a building, I mean, organization, who had, they had manpower, they, they have the money, they have the resources and everything to, to take on this, this job that, that we have been doing for the last 17 years and doing an excellent job. And, and I felt upset. I felt, I felt cheated for 17 years. And now it's 26 years with IBM. It's for, for 17 years, I felt, I felt, I felt, I didn't feel good at all. And let, but let me tell you how God's work. Even going through, I, they, they told me and said that I had to, to do a resume or do work history or do a, a, a cover letter. Well, I've been in the job for 26 years. But my reputation exceeds itself. You all know me as James Edward Smith, but the people at IBM know me as Smitty. They know when they want something done, they can call on Smitty. They know that of my character, my intellect. They know that I would do what it would take to get the job done. I never ran from any challenge, and I will never run from another. But I was, I've, I, I, I've, I've gotten so caught up. I'm sharing a personal testimony with you this morning to let you know if we just embrace change, we'll be able to face tomorrow challenges in our, barber, in our barbershops in our homes, in our church, in our community, with our friends, if you just embrace change. But I had to do a resume. And I'm, I'm headstrong. And, and, and I, wrote, I wrote out my resume. I never done, hadn't done a resume in 25 years. But I did my resume. And my daughter, in, in, is who's now in California, Kendra, she said, Daddy, said, when you do your resume, said, send it to me, let me critique it. When I did my resume, because I just did it for the last 25 years, it was up to four pages. And when I got it back from my daughter, it was down to two. And I said, how can this be? But she's in that professional now. Change have came from 25 years up until now. See, if you do a resume now, the, res the, 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 the interviewer, he doesn't want to read anything, or he or she doesn't want to read a resume that's over two pages long. And so when she cut it out, but she told me, she said, Daddy, she said, look, she said, it's good to have a big resume. He said, but some of the things you can talk about when you have your interview. You don't have to put everything down on paper. And I took that from her, and I, and, I, and I thank her for that. A wonderful resume. But I was still having problems. I, I, I was still upset that I would have to do a resume because of who I, who I thought I was within IBM. I knew there was people that was speaking on my behalf. I knew there was people that was praying for me and I was praying for myself. But it was, I needed more than that because I was, it was a new company and they didn't know Smitty Smith. They didn't know James Edward Smith. But let me tell you, the resume that my daughter wrote for me and when they, when they got it, they were able to learn some insights about James Edward Smith. People had prayed for me, and they, and God had pressed on their hearts, and they knew about Smitty Smith. When I went to the interview, Tom Knocklet was the interviewer. We had a 30-minute interview. He had to interview everyone in our organization. 
So I had 30 minutes with this man to tell him about me for the last 26 years. The man took up 25 minutes of the interview, telling me about himself, telling me about the company, telling me about everything. But I had, I had so much that was in me that I wanted to get out of me to let him know that he wasn't just looking at it, just a man uh, uh, that he could just talk over and and and, and I, I I wanted him. I wanted him to hear me because I had something that I wanted to say. Finally, he gave me five minutes. He said, tell me about yourself. He said, tell me about what you do. And let me tell you, I couldn't even speak for that five minutes. After I spoke to him, I told him, I said, well, look, I said, I don't know what you're going to do. I said, I don't know if you're going to offer me a job. I don't know if I will be hired. I, I, really, I really don't know. I said, but April the 26th, April the 27th, April the 28th, I need to be in Carson County, Texas for the 57th convention. I'm the executive president of the Texas Association of Tonsils Artists. And I told him about this organization and what it meant to me. And he said in the interview, he said, I need to talk to IBM about this. Well, his company is floor, and I was wondering why he would need to talk to IBM about me taking the time off. His assistant that was there for the interview, he said, well, look, said uh, he can take PTO days off. That's, that's time off without pay so he could be at the, at the convention. And he said, well, no. He said he's applying for management. So we, it's called TOP, T-O-P-W. It's time off, T-O-W-P, it's time off with pay. And, and so it, I was confused. I'm interviewing. But he's talking like I had already had the job. So we had this, we had the interview, and I left and thanked them for their time, and I made sure that my employees they they had their interviews and and uh, wanted to make sure that everyone would have an offer if they had an opportunity to go with Floor. Three days later the offers start to come in. One of my employees got an offer and he got a raise. The next one got an offer and when they called him, Philip, he started saying yes, 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 before they even told him what his salary was gonna be. Even before they even told him what he was gonna be doing. He said yes, yes, yes. Philip got a raise. One employee is 70 years old. He retired from IBM. He's with Grubb and Ellis, so he get his retirement. He get his Social Security. And we didn't think they were going to offer him a job. He was given a job, making more money. Then it got down to Sid. Snyder and myself. Sid looked at it. He got an offer. But Sid said, I'm not going to get an offer unless you get it. I'm not going to accept unless you get an offer, Smitty. And I told Sid, I said, you need to go on and accept your position. I said, the God that I serve, he's able. He's going to take care of Smitty and his family. You go ahead and accept your, your offer. And I had to get him, close the door and told him, I said, I need you to go now. Because I wanted everyone that I that reported to me to have a job offer. Because they're for their family. It wasn't so much about me, it was before their family. Because God is yet and God is continuing to go, going to take care of, of the Smith family. 
After Sid went, left my office to go and call them on his cell phone and to set the offer that he had, and he got a raise. I received a call from Tom. Tom said, Smith, said, have you received an offer? And I told him no. He said, good. I thought that was strange. But for your, you think for your bad, but God is also working for your good. He said, I want you. And he said, this is confidential. He said, please don't share it with, the, with, with anybody until after it's all been announced. He said, I want you to be my area manager. He said, I want you to run the operation. I'm going to be looking to you for, for leadership. He said, and the HR is going to be calling you with an offer in a few minutes. And I hung up from him. Shortly after that, I received my call from HR, and they made me an offer. Don't you know God is good? Not only did I get more responsibility, I also got a raise. And I told him, I said, look, I told him in the interview, I said, the 26, 27, 28, that I need to be in Corsica County, Texas to be at the TLTA. But I had to embrace change. I had to embrace change to face tomorrow challenges. I had to do it so I could be as an employee for floor. And I thought about it. I said, Lord, how can I be in two places at one time? He said, take your video camera. Do your speech from the video camera and record yourself. He said, what you're doing is not for no shape, form, or fashion. It's not for no outside show. He said, the people will see that you're real, that you love this organization. But to embrace change, your theme is to embrace change. I gave you that theme for a reason, Smitty. To embrace change, to face tomorrow challenges. And I thank God for that. I am in Dallas, Texas this morning while you're seeing this video. But I am spiritually with you in Corsica County, Texas. After I finish my eight hours, because he's going to introduce our organization to everybody, I will be coming back. I will be driving back to Corsica County, Texas this afternoon. To be with you for the bingo challenge, for the hospitality hour. I will be there with you for the queen contest. I will sleep overnight, get up early, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, drive back to Dallas to be with Floor to manage that responsibility, to, to get everything lined up, complete my eight hours on Tuesday, get back in my automobile and drive back to Corsica County to be there with you for the banquet. I want you to know that I'm embracing change to face tomorrow challenges. I need you to embrace change. I need you so if you embrace it, that you will be able to face tomorrow challenges. There is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing too hard for you. I'd like to share this story. One of my ex-co-workers who works for Grub and Ellis, who I will bounce some things off as I was going through the transition period from Grover and Ellis and, and them trying to uh, interview me and to hire me and everything. And, and I was upset, constantly upset. Yeah. And I would call on Sharon Ratliff. She was the HR person in Territory 6. I'm in Territory 5. And I would call Sharon and I said, well, look, said, I'm not getting my service, and I'm upset about that. They, they had it, the, the contract that 
that they they have written says that if floor offer me a job and if it's less money then I wouldn't be able to get my service. I wouldn't be able to get my week service, a one week salary for 17 years. I wouldn't get the 17 weeks of salary. I, I, I wouldn't be able to get that. I, 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 but then I will be stuck with a job that's, that's paying less. And so I, I was upset about that. And I would call Sharon and Sharon would say, Smitty, don't worry about it. Said, you're going to be all right. Said, don't worry about it. Said, you said that service said, don't worry about it. Said, but they're going to take care of you. Said, you ain't going to need that service. They're going to take care of you. But I was upset about it because it was, that was mine. That was for me. She said, well, you got your PTO days. That's your paid time off. She said, how many hours do you have? And so I, I told her, I didn't know. She said, well, go in on Utility Pro. And I went in on the, on the system and I looked at it and I had, I had the max of 256 hours. They come to 32 days. She said, you multiply that time, your, your salary, your hourly salary, and that's going to let you know where you're going to be. So I, 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 I was just thinking, I, I, upset, and then I just started thanking God for, for that. But after I had gotten my offer, I have gotten the money that I needed, and then I knew what I was getting for my PTO day, I called Sharon. She's in a different territory. She's in HR. And Floor is a Fortune 500 company, and they have HR people all over. Sharon told me, she said, Smitty, they told me, my manager told me that I would not be offered a job. And that hurt. But what I had to do, I had to start encouraging Sharon just like she encouraged me. I said, Sharon, everything is going to be all right. Don't you worry about it. God got your back. And I remember my pastor preaching about three weeks ago and it was in that and that really preached this sermon from Jeremiah the 29th chapter. For I have a plan for you. For your welfare, for your family, for, for anything that come up against you. I, I have a plan for you. And I, I told Sharon that. And Sharon said, you know, Smitty said, that's that verse is part of my daily devotion. And I told her, I said, well, look. Don't you worry about it. He have a plan for you. This was on a Tuesday evening. And I received another call from Tom. Oh, can't you see God working? Tom called me. He said, well, Smitty, he said, look. He said, in your new role, and, and I can't share with you what all you're going to be doing right now, but in your new role, that we're working it out because we're doing all the hiring. He said, I'm going to have to replace you at the Capel site. He said, he said, do you have anybody in mind? And I, I automatically, I went back to Sharon. He said, I tell you what, he said, HR, the girls from HR is flying in tomorrow and they're going to do your welcome to floor. And she said, he said that, look, he said, he said, we'll talk after that. So they set the meeting up from 5 o'clock to 7 p.m. this past Wednesday. And I went. We had the HR meeting. And after the meeting, he said, Smitty, have you thought about what I said? And I told him, Tom, I said, yes, Tom. I said, I recommend Sharon Ratliff. He said, she's on my list to, to be interviewed. He said, I was going to interview her. But she was in territory five, six, and uh, so. But I, I, but I had her down, and I wanted, I want to interview her. That's how God's work. I have a plan for you, and I, and I told Sharon that. So after he, I said, well, look, I said, I have information about. I said, let me tell you about Sharon. He said, I have a resume. 
Said, I already know about it. Said, thank you. And so I I leave and, and I get on the get in my car and I call Sharon on the phone. I said, Sharon, I said, I, I put your name out there. I said, but when I call your name, he said he, he had your name down to interview you. I just want you to know that God is already working on your behalf. Your behalf. He has a plan for you. And I want you to know that this past Friday, Sharon Ratliff will be taking my position in the Capel site. She's never done this work before. But she's going to be a great employee, a great asset. See, when I embrace change to face tomorrow challenges and I allow God to come into my heart, I was able to turn, her, turn that thing around to encourage a young lady who encouraged me. If she had not encouraged me, there's no telling where she or I would be today. But I stayed the course after she told me, she said, Smitty, you're going to be all right. You stay there. God got a plan for you. God knows what he's doing. You the man. Just stay right there. And I'm glad to say that now I have 14 people under me. Before I had four. I have 14 people under me. And I need to be in Dallas because they started, it started at midnight this Sunday morning. It's when I started at midnight. Sunday night, Monday morning, is when I start working for Floor as a Floor employee. I have a IBM badge here. This, get, this badge here gets me into the building at IBM. This badge gives me the power to open any door in that building. But at midnight, tonight, Midnight, this Sunday night, but um, tonight, midnight, tonight, this badge will do me any good, no more good because this badge will be deleted and I won't have access to the facility. But I've already taken picture for my new badge. And so when I go to the building in the morning, I won't be able to use my old badge to open the door. I'll have to press the button and the security man or woman will ask me to, to come in. And when I go in to the building, they're going to give me a new badge. But the new badge is going to have a new name. And the new name is going to be Floor. And when I get that badge, and when I get ready to go anywhere in the building, I'll be able to go just like I did with the old badge. When you embrace change and God and you allow God to be with you and be among you and, 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 and God leading and guide you and, and he ordered your steps and, and he have a plan for you. No matter what you go up against, God always going to have someone that's going to encourage you. I, and I'm going to encourage you. I want to encourage the chapters. I know it looked blink. I know the economy looked dims. I know the days that your money and your finances is not coming in as you would think. But you know, God is yet in control. He is in control. And I thank him and I praise him for it. And I know he's going to take care. It's my prayer that he take care of you. Take care of your family. Lord, the Lord said he would never leave you nor forsake you. And I encourage you to stand, stand on his word. Stand on his word. Stand in your barbershop. Stand for your customer. Stand for your friend. I encourage you to encourage somebody. When they're tired, let them know that they can march on. When they're upset, let them know that it's not, it's not, that's not all bad. It's not all bad to be upset. I encourage you to encourage them so you'll be a blessing for them. I'm a giver. 
it's hard for me to, to receive. But when, <coughs> when I receive things, <coughs> thank you, Lord. It's hard for me to receive things. And I say this <laughs> to the TALTA as we embrace change, to face tomorrow challenges. Let us go forth. Let us encourage one another to be with us. Let us encourage one another to take on a, a, a bigger role of this organization. Let us encourage one another to come and stand with us because for 57 years, God has been good to this organization. God has allowed this organization to come from the St. Mary Baptist Church in Tyler, Texas. Come out of men and women homes in Tyler, Texas. Now into hotels. Now into churches to have church services. God has done so much for this organization. And he's yet doing it. In Tyler, Texas, the historical landmark, the pre-dedication of the landmark in 2004, the historical man landmark in 2005, the museum in 2007, the wall of fame in 2007. So let's let's be encouraged as we go forward. For we have a history that's behind us. And so let's not leave anyone behind. Let's grab hold to one another. Let's pray for one another. Let's encourage one another. And let's do what we know is best. And let's do God's holy and righteous rule. And remember, Lord, whatever you're doing, don't do it. Doing without me. In this
Don't do it with Diane and it's still gone. Don't do it without me. Don't do it, no Lord, without Peggy Gibbons, Lord. You look him. Jesse Langley. Demarcus Hawkins, Lord. Deborah Elliott, Lord. Don't do it, Lord. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it without Ray Shufa, Lord. Eddie Shufa, Lord. Don't do it, Lord. Don't do it, Lord, without Michael from San Antonio, Texas. Lord, don't do it without his wife, Lord. Don't do it, Lord. Don't do it, Lord. Don't, Lord. Don't do it, Lord. Don't do it, Lord. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it, Lord. Don't do it, Lord. Please don't do it, Lord. Without all the tilling, Lord. Don't do it. And all the other members that I can't just call your names right now, who's there? Lord, please. And don't do it. Don't do it without me. I want to thank the organization. Thank you. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you.